those of you who got an invite. Welcome to NerdProm. <laughs> no matter where in the world you are, we're all NERDS International. With the hyphen. <laughs> um, yeah, so we usually like have a bit before the intro that we sort of, it has to be something really punchy, really funny. Okay. So, because you're the guest, just say something really funny. You're pretty funny, right? It just needs to be something really fun. I mean, really funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be. It's got to be like the gold material. Right, go. Seen. Just say the first thing that comes to your head. Go. The little fat bombs. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's bad. That's rubbish. We'll do it again. Should we do a different one? Coming at you live from Castle Ravenloft, it's me, Nick Lamley. And me, Harrison Hunt, aka Galaxy Man. And we are Tabletop, tabletop Twats. twats. Tabletop Twats. twats. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a very Super special, special friend <laughs> on the podcast today. <laughs> um, he is a great guy, he's educationally subnormal, nobody likes him, you're going to love him. His name is Ryan Field. Hello, say hello, Ryan. Hello, everyone. I'm seconds away from walking out. Oh. Now, what kind of intro? Number is this? one, odd bod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Ryan is a fat man who we play RPGs <laughs> with, and we brought him on for a very special reason this time. But this is a tabletop podcast about tabletop RPGs, and this week we've got features coming out the fucking anus. Creatures. Oh, we have got the intro, which we've already done. That's our <laughs> best feature. We've got what you've been slaying. We've got the main subject, which this week is how to create a good character. And then we've got adventure call, cool, challenges, fireside tales. We've got electro letters. We've got jingles. We've got shingles. We've got blingles. <laughs> There's all sorts of shit. So Ryan's got two jingles. <laughs> so strap the fuck in. Isn't it right? Yeah, yeah, strap up and take strap it. Strap on. Yeah, and <laughs> strap up and take it. And enjoy it, you know? <laughs> just let it happen. Let it flow. Let this podcast slip gently in. Yeah. See a little bit of romance there. It's beautiful. Me. Full sexual intercourse. <laughs> Oi! Yeah? What you slaying? This segment is called What You've Been Slaying. And do you want to describe this segment, please, Ryan? Yeah, well, it's basically a, a catch-up of what we've been doing during the week, isn't it? Um, yes. Things we've been playing. Ish. Is that right? Is that what I'm doing here? It's, yeah, yeah, obviously yeah, discussing. We're just trying <laughs> to listen, listen regularly. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. You're nearly right. It's, yes, yeah, what we're playing or what we've got. No game in the game world going on. Exactly. So this week okay. we were playing Savage Worlds, and it was the conclusion to Chapter 1 of Nick's um, Savage World Zombies game. Oh and yeah, it was amazing. It was a really good one. Yeah, it, it was, was one that we we said, haven't we? It was one of Nick's best sets yet. I thought so. you were going to say my best, um, my best ever like role, but I've never DM gem before, so yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was also the worst. Yeah, yeah. shit. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You're number one and number two. And it's a shame yeah. that I, it took the last. Like, like, I did, it wasn't until <laughs> the last. <laughs> Shut up. It wasn't until the last two episodes I actually relaxed, but yeah. it's been wicked, man. Thanks, yeah. thanks. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So in the campaign, no, you it, man. we it awesome. we basically ended it where we were looking for one of the characters' parents. Yes. And we were in a caravan going through this fucking village uh -huh. trying to get to his house. And it was such a short like distance that we actually covered, but it was so fun because it was just full of fucking zombies and, and it was just action packed and that was what we haven't had too much like intense action and i think that mm. was a real you know epic sort of battle towards the end it was it was good yeah because yeah. we we had we were fucking fending off zombies while we were driving along in the caravan and that broke down and we had to go on foot and oh, yeah. then we got to that well then house. you reversed it didn't you? you used it as a diversion so you like slammed yeah, it to we... reverse and let it drive off into the dark right yeah yeah that's great a diversion mm -hmm. the, the hazard lights blinking they was all running towards and when we it, were we legging it to the house it. when we were legging it to the house we got to this like uh dense sort of foresty area and it was raining and it was like pitch black and it was the most atmospheric fight yet because we were just fucking fighting these guys trying to kill them in the woods it was fucking awesome yeah. and then it ended with like a showdown in in a house in porky's house we ended the campaign with well you ended your campaign with a message from porky's parents that they left behind in the house that's right yeah and it turns out his mum was something to do with the cure and we have to go and find him elsewhere but also unfortunately 
Corky got munched. Oh yeah, he got munched yeah. by a zombie. He, he got, got bitten. bitten on the hand. Yeah. Shoulder. Oh, shoulder. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> right, that a few hours by then. That was a couple. Forgot what dice the beers were flowing. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, it was it was really really good. But in addition to that, you've got a new RPG product, haven't you, Nick? I have. Yeah. You've been shopping. Yeah. Absolutely. We posted a picture of this on the Face Spark already. Um, Face Spark. <laughs> but Nick's bought a new book. Yes, a I new picked special up, book. I picked up the Call for of Special Cthulhu Boy. For a special boy. He's rubbing my head now. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, Which head? <laughs> I was just going to make that. <laughs> right. Um, so I've yeah. So I picked up the amazing Call of Cthulhu seventh edition um, Keeper rule book. And Ryan, right, what do you think of this, mate? Yeah, have a look at have a look at the. It's uh, got a delightful smell to it, Nick. <laughs> oh yeah, you've already I, been I, sniffing it. It's a new RPG smell. Everywhere. He's already yeah. been sniffing and it. A good old sniff up. He was sniffing it with a downstairs nose. <laughs> oh dear. Wait, let's mate, talk about no, fucking... no, the book is. It's absolutely amazing, and the way the artwork, even in it, there's so many different variations and different sort of. You yeah, know what I mean, I look at that. That's so cool. One you know, of the things like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's twice we've seen Obama. Yeah. In, but no, it's not. He features in every RPG rule book. But the cool thing is, is that this is, I think, the first edition of Cthulhu that is in color. Oh well. really? Yeah, because all the other ones were in black and white, and they were nice as shit, right? But this one <laughs> is even nicer yeah, as yeah. shit because it, it's like a lot the of illustrations are. Look at that. Absolutely incredible. Look at this. He's showing sort of a right. hideous wolf creature. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's an amazing Keeper's Rulebook, and it's massive as well. Um, yeah. The previous editions were all in one called Rulebooks, but this one is now uh, is split into Keeper's and Player's Handbooks, and but they've actually bulked it out with extra content rather than just cutting it in half like GURPS. Fuck you, Steve Jackson. Ooh. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope he doesn't listen to this. Give us free stuff, though. He doesn't please. anymore. We like your game. <laughs> Still, Gerbs is great, and give us free stuff, please. Yeah. Yeah. Love you, Big really. Big shout out to Stevie. <laughs> shout out to Steve. Stevie with the merch. Right, yeah, so anyway, it's lovely, and it's yeah. reasonably priced, to be honest. I mean, it's 35 quid. 35 pounds. Okay. So, um, yeah, great buy. And great buy. The Thule 7th edition looks awesome. They streamlined a lot of the stuff. Um, that I didn't even think needed streamlining, but somehow they've made it even more playable than the last edition. So is it still easy? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's even easier. It's, it's amazing. And I'm playing it on Saturday, so I'll report back on the next pod about how good it Your is. Your findings. Nice. Yes. My name is Garrett Coleman, and when I'm not s to get a I am listening to the table pop cracks. And one last thing that is bloody amazing. We went to a convention, didn't we, Nick? We did last but week. Yeah, I heard about this. We went to the convention from the comfort of our own homes whilst drinking a what? lovely beer. What kind of magic is this? Exactly. Well, I'll tell you right. <laughs> Let me explain. We went to FG Con. Mm -hmm. What? Fantasy Grails Con. Okay, cool. So Fantasy Grails is a virtual tabletop. Right. Um, and it's pretty cool actually. It's got so you, different games, you get different rule sets and you can download them and you play and it's uh, well it's like an extension of pen and paper. Yeah, exactly. And you can play it online with your mates and Fantasy Grounds Con was hosted on TeamSpeak and they had a bunch of different rooms in there where you could sign up to games and play all sorts of different stuff. Yeah, you put your plate, you, so if you want to play, you check all your games, they put up a, a schedule way before, and okay. um, you can see what you like, and there's everything, there's Pathfinder, there's Savage Worlds, there's D&D, you know, like, uh, Call of Cthulhu, all the games. Oh, brilliant. And you check them out, and it tells you what the game is, and the story and stuff, and you apply for a play, or well, not apply, you just say you want to play, Yeah. and then um, you get accepted, so it's all pre-booked and stuff, so everyone's like... So you like, just show up on the at the time. Yeah, on exactly the that, you go into your TeamSpeak client, and then your little room's waiting for you, and you pop in, and then you, your GM will give you the code, and you go into fancy grounds and you play man it's fucking it awesome was, it man. was wow. piss easy to do yeah and it really, really straightforward really... especially for me yeah <laughs> and... I, i'd need simple as well Nick. exactly we come from the same cloth and it actually, yeah. <laughs> it actually felt like a real convention as well because Did, didn't it because you sort of walking around we're well, not walking around but virtually, virtually walking, walking around. around right okay um it's sort of some sort of intercomputer thing i didn't really understand it but we was you... walking into other rooms yeah okay. and you nice. you can listen into people's games and stuff and it's really good. And we played um, Trail of Cthulhu, which is a gumshoe-based um, investigatory game. And we it was, broke it. I think. <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to be serious. Sorry, Eric. It ended up getting a bit bit nuts. It was DM'd by Eric Lamoureux of the Wild Die podcast fame, and he did a really good job of DMing it. And it was such good fun. Really and good fun. I don't want to spoil the story, but no. there was some bloody stupid shit that happened in the game. A sausage was involved. There was a sausage. Uh, I chucked a sausage at a guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did the shocker to a oh magic rock. Oh my god, rock. to a magic rock, yeah. Um, if you don't know what the shocker in, is, just Google it. 
Yeah, as in that. <laughs> Ryan is, Ryan's doing a yeah. thing with his hands at the moment. Um, exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know what a shocker is, um, I, Google gentleman. it, followed by XXX, no. and you'll get some very educational <laughs> no, videos. No, no. You've got to cut that. <laughs> I'm not cutting that. <laughs> I've got to educate the people, Nick. I've got to give the people what they anyway, want. Anyway, so to a rock. <laughs> shocker. To a rock. Poor Eric, I felt sorry for him. I was trying to be sensible. I was like a, just a useless artist. <laughs> yeah, but he said specifically that my character was eccentric. So yeah, and I checked my backstory, man, and it was like, yeah, I, well, just and the first my character thing, today. <laughs> the first thing that my character said was, I went up to a door and I'm like, I'm going to give it the old college knock-knock. <laughs> and it was just like, it sort of went downhill from there, didn't it? Because we, we were just such, we were acting like... We played with a great with. group, though. I hope, I hope we didn't... Uh, no, it was I think they had a good time as well because we they're were really right really nice guys. Good, yeah, really good guys. So yeah, we'll, hopefully we'll play again. We'll get you on on Rye. Right yeah, absolutely. Also, I played another game. Uh, I managed to jump into another game last minute because um, okay. I had such a good time the day before. And um, so I checked it out, and Eric let me know like 90 minutes before a game was starting. I was like, oh shit! So I quickly jumped in, <clears throat> right, and played a bit of. Um, so, uh, so Savage Warhammer, so it's the Warhammer lore and uh, kind of idea uh, on Savage World, uh, Savage World's rules. So it was fucking awesome, mate. We had a great time. We had to um, we had to save a cat called Siggy. FG Con or just get on Fantasy Grounds. It's a really cool. But hang on for a minute. Wait. Shut up. I am sorry. <laughs> because we they're doing another one in six months, aren't they? They are. Yes. So, so you need to get game. a fucking computer in time. Yeah. To get online. Okay. Cool. I will buy a laptop. You, hear, you heard it here yeah. first. Ryan's gonna play next time. Thanks, guys, for buying me the laptop. <laughs> I, I, I can't happening. gather that. It's not happening. Here. Fuck right off. Because you guys are rolling it with this flash studio of yours that you sit in. I want to DM a game next time. Yeah. And I think I'm gonna do made. Oh, oh sweet. Because nice. people, I need to get a word out, man. You need to get a word made out. I'm going to get some people playing. I'm going to make some people feel really uncomfortable. <laughs> that's, oh, God. That is my. Uh, let's see how long your your uh, room's empty for. It'll be me, me and one massive weeb in there. No, we we'll just get a text from them guy, from him going, guys, no one's playing. You got to come into my room. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. I'll just play on my own. Yeah. I'll I'll be in my own. Playing game. in the room by yourself. Uh, another good thing about, F I must say, another good thing as well. If you're, um, if you just want to go up to FG Con and you haven't managed to get into a game, you can. Just go into the chat client, and uh, as long as you're quiet, let okay. me listen. Yeah, because we listen to um, Gary Garrett and Beats McCallum, the Big Mac. Big Mac. We money. listened to him doing. Um, <laughs> I like we listened to him money. doing a Starsky and Hutch game, Ooh. and it was it was really funny and really awesome. It's so fucking awesome! There, it sounded so good. That's FG. He popped point. into ours as well, so that was nice. <laughs> so um, yeah, well done. Yeah, it was brilliant. Thank you. Main subject. Main subject. <coughs> Sorry. So this is the main subject, right? And this is why we brought Ryan onto the podcast. Because if you allow me to put my dick sucking hat on, <laughs> um, you is the hat, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Get it out away from me. Yeah. Um, it's the helmet. Yeah. You create good characters, right? And you, you've. Let's be honest, Nick. Here's the most memorable. Out of all of our group, he creates the ones that everyone talks about when they're down the pub. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> the thing is, we need to know the secret. And that's what we're doing. Right. We're going to teach the people that are listening how to create a standout great character. So we want to go through your process mm -hmm. of how you make good characters. Before we do that, let's go through a few right. examples. Okay. So your first character in Cthulhu, talk us about him. Mm -hmm. talk, us okay. about talk us about him, please. Right. Talk about him, us, please, now. <laughs> okay. The talk. guy talk, yeah? I talk the guy. Yeah, okay. Begin. Right, my Commence. first character... Okay. Um, okay, good. My first character was... <laughs> Stop staring Rockford at him. <laughs> my first character was Rockford Magnum. Um, although it does sound like a porn star, he was... Um, uh, he was an older guy, wasn't he? He was a sort mm -hmm. of, like, mid-50s, and... To be honest, when when I that was my first ever character that I built, so I, I wanted to sort of. I was talking to Harrison. Was, we went down the pub, didn't we? He was talking about the whole process and, and you know what, what, and, and the game yeah. and what the setting is and everything like that. And it just you know that whole hot love Lovecraftian sort of universe really interests me anyway. So um, I thought it'd be cool to just sort of like you know start thinking about my character. So I'd be driving to work and I'd be sort of like daydreaming you know what can I do what can I do it'd be cool if he was an investigator yeah okay cool what a private eye maybe that would be awesome why was he a private eye maybe he was a disgraced cop before and it kind of goes from there and it builds but yeah and, and also he um, was ex-mafia wasn't he he was ex-mafia yeah that's right because I thought that'd be a cool sort of like yeah. story because we was, we was all posting on our group chat weren't we from the sounds of it it's, it's actually a fairly sort of standard um, 
Cthulhu character, but he was amazing because he sort of, as he evolved, like, yeah. he, he loved the booze, he got amnesia because of uh, insanity, so he forgot he used to be in the Mafia. Yeah. So his whole point of him was that he was going to have these connections and he didn't even have them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, um, <laughs> it was like, it, it, when that happened, that was devastating because it was literally one of my big points I wanted to use, like, yeah, you know, yeah. call up you know, the Don or something and he comes to help us out or something. I couldn't stand blood as well. It's hot in here. Yeah. And, um, he yeah he, he he loved the ladies and he, there was like some amazing moments with him like there was that point where you were in bed and one of the female characters got in bed with him right, and yeah. you were like um, <laughs> I, I made you roll constitution I think it was to That's see right. if you got a boner yes. and you did and you were like it's your fault you stupid slut <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then um, you you forgot you forgot that James's daughter was upstairs so immediately after he said it he shielded his mouth like he. <gasps> <laughs> It's like being caught out of school by the teacher, wasn't it? Was oh, it was really good. What about, um, what about his torture techniques? They were pretty cool. Do you remember when you lopped a bollock off uh, in Call of Cthulhu? Well, not you personally, obviously. Rockford did. Do you remember? Yeah, you sliced someone's bollock off. Oh, right. You told yes, everyone yes. to get out of the room I'm and you were like, this now. Yeah, you were yeah, like yeah. don't worry about it, guys. I'll take the sack. I got this here. covered. <laughs> yeah, and then you just, you, you say, everyone get out of the room. I'm going to do Wasn't something it interrogation? a bit weird. It was interrogation. Yeah, it was interrogation. Yeah. It started okay. as interrogation. It turned into murder. Well, Rockford, <laughs> I, I thought Rockford only knew the harsh way, you know, ex mafia. Exactly. Turn private. It was well, nothing. Know, it lop her ear off. No yeah, props. No worries. But and a bollock. And, and a you bollock. Left, yeah. Do you remember you found an egg cup, left the bollock in it, and then left a threatening note with it, and it said, "Fuck you. The book is ours." Bollock. Bollock. Yeah. yeah. But after that, we then played Pathfinder, and I think I think this might be your best character ever. <laughs> yeah. But yes, you so made today. Is. You yeah. made. Thank um, you. Thank you very much. The gnome cleric, Big Colin. Big Colin. So, yeah, tell us a little bit about Big Colin, mate. Um, Big Colin was uh, an, an, a gnome with a height complex, <laughs> and that's why he changed his name to Big Colin. Where did you get that from, though? Um, well, that, the thing... Did I, that just pop into your head randomly? No, I, I think I saw something about some bloke with a height complex, and I okay. thought that would be funny, like, anyway, yeah. with a character. And then, it always is. Yeah. And Little man syndrome is, when is bad. When characters showed me... When Harrison showed me the characters I could, you know, the type of class I could be, then... The gnome seemed yeah. like the obvious choice to have a high complex, and it'd be very funny. And yeah. I thought it'd be just like an angry little gnome, sort of a and bad noddy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like it. And I liked it because every time somebody mentioned his high, he'd be perfectly rational and calm. And then somebody'd be like, "So about uh, the short one over here," and you'd be like, <laughs> yeah. "Yeah, I'd make a crazy little noise and I'd try and attack him." Yeah, that was it. So, you'd just see red, and yeah. you would like, oh, "Right, I, I have to attack." Cause but he, I think yeah. he was neutral good, wasn't he? He was neutral good. Yeah, he no no. Yes, and then he changed. Yeah, he changed he eventually. Change. But Not for the thought of his own, though, I don't No, think. no, there was, he went, we went through a harsh time where we was locked in jail for three years. That's right, yeah. But the thing so, is, you, <laughs> yeah. Ryan, Some, um, yeah, he got pretty tough. fucked up through doing that. Yeah. Ryan came up with this fucking sick backstory, and he, he texted me the whole thing, because he was just thinking about it on his way to work and stuff. And he texted me this, this whole backstory, and basically the Big Colin was a circus gnome that was part of a freak show, and then he um, taught himself... Magic while he was in his cage on the side without people knowing was that that's right, right. Yeah. yes yeah and yeah. then and then he, he brought was... holy fire onto the circus <clears throat> and then um, I had this sort of lifelong grudge against the guy that put him there which was a uh, character of your creation called Cutie Ratface who was the <laughs> ringleader of the circus <laughs> tell us a little yeah. bit about him Cutie Ratface well yeah he was he was the big baddie um, he basically forced Colin to perform as a stand up performer and you know be ridiculed about his height and the, the type of being he was because in that universe gnomes are known were quite rare and yeah, they, that's they, right. they, never, they never were viewed for properly so he was kind of like a circus exposition and, and yeah anyway Cutie Ratface used to whip him beat him and just make a laugh but then out of him because mm -hmm. he of your, escaped because so. of your backstory i decided to to implement cutie rat face into mm. the story and um the whole the the first dungeon was that you guys were put uh, kicked into alice in wonderland world and um everyone else was put down there by someone but you were kicked down there by cutie rat face that's right and it turns yeah. out he and then i sort of made him kind of the central villain for a bit because mm -hmm. i thought that'd be really cool to have this grudge and all his mates are on board they want to kill cutie rat face too and when you met him finally in the game Remember, he just did not give a fuck about how you felt, and you were like, you put me in chains, you make my life a misery, all of this. And then Cute Ratface was like, you think I give a fuck, motherfucker? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then he was like, yeah. oh, by the way, I fucked your mum. <laughs> yeah, so he was like, fuck And then there was a bit where, like... Connie was quite a vengeful character, so, you know, he, oh, he, he was small, but he had a lot and of... And Cutie Ratface used to really yeah. pull everybody's strings. He was fucking... And do you remember he was an annoying yeah. clown? Yeah. 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 Do you remember then there was a point where, when you met him, you, you actually started getting annoyed in real life by what he was saying? Yeah. That's when you become so 
attached to a character that you actually take it as personal. Totally. Brian, he, he, then you stood up and you were like, um, you were like, actually, can we go for a break, please? Because I'm, I'm actually getting really annoyed. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no. I probably had a diva moment, didn't I? Yeah. Now, uh, that, that's just an example of two of your characters. We've spoken about Randy Dixon before in the podcast. He was fucking awesome. Yeah. We spoke about um, Dr. Twist as well. Oh, right, yeah. And <laughs> that was bizarre. Yeah. That was, that was weird. <laughs> he was just a bit of silliness, really. That but one. the thing is, that's how and where, where you excel, though, because you do sometimes have these um, silly ideas when the character concept is thought up. But I feel like where... You actually make a good character, and this is a good tip for anyone: is that there's nothing wrong with comedy characters. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. You could, you can do that if you want. But the thing is, is that you've got to understand that you're going to be playing for a long time, and that joke's going to wear off. So you need to be, it needs to be like something beyond that. After it's just a comedy character. Yeah. yeah. Colin wasn't just a gnome with a high complex. Randy wasn't just a disgraced ex-military sex criminal. <laughs> it was like there, there were there, there's like nuances to all of them, and they had real personalities, and that's why I think that that game did get you annoyed in real life because he had such a real personality. Yeah. He really did assume the role of Big Colin that yeah. he actually. For them, for, for them, four hours once a week, you were Colin. Exactly right, and, mm. and you, you do get caught up in it, and you kind of... That's the beauty of roleplay, though. Right? It was always sort of like, throughout the game, I'd always be thinking, okay, he's slightly aggressive, what would he do in this situation? Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and, and you, that's the way I always approach it. You, you always but... play your character, whether it, even if it's detrimental to the, the story... You yeah. will always play your character. You've got that's to play your force, of it. Yeah, that, that I think it, that makes man. an honesty to And that's and why, that's why they play so well, that's, mate. I mean, that, characters... I mean, thanks for saying this, guys. You know, I think you big me up way too much. But it's, 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 it's great that you've... Get off the that. fucking show. <laughs> yeah, it, but, so... <laughs> I'll be laying awake at night thinking of fucking goblins. Fucking goblins. Fucking goblins. Fucking goblins. So now, talk us <laughs> through. <laughs> talk us through like your character creation process. Like, what's the first thing you do then? How do you come up with the cool character idea? Yeah. Right. I just. I mean, first of all, I, I, I go for comedy. Tend to anyway, straight away. So I think of a so, someone that's in a fucked up scenario, mm -hmm. or had something fucked up to happen to him, or just odd or eccentric, mm -hmm. just some which is immediately sort of entertaining and makes it the character kind of memorable to the group. Yeah. So you guys will think, oh my god, it's such a wacky idea, you know, yeah. like this this little gnome showing up with such a high complex. You you wouldn't forget that, you mm -hmm. know, that's mm -hmm. and that, that automatically makes a staple, <clears throat> I guess, into the into the campaign. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, I think about the character first in that respect and then I think about well what journey did he go on to sort of make him that way, you know? And what what could, and then think of different scenarios that would possibly explain why he's that way or why he looks like that mm -hmm. or why he, why he says the things he does. So nice, yeah, nice. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and you just go from there. And then I've got my character basically. You think of a character first and then roll it to fit your character, not the other way around. That's yeah. the way it always should be because otherwise you you run the danger of your character having absolutely no, no personality. Yeah. What you want to do is think of the character first and then let's say for instance in Call of Cthulhu where you're picking your skills. Make sure it makes sense with their backstory. You totally, Don't yeah. just yeah. have a fucking character that has that has like ninety points of shotgun, despite the fact he was a teacher. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, have your skills make sense, and yours always do. I mean, Colin knew magic because his backstory actually had that in there. So really yeah. worked. Yeah, and, 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 and I think that's important. You make your character sheet based on what what you what what your character should be. Buffalo soldier looks like a told you. Any damsel that's in distress, be out of that dress when she meets Jim West. Rough deck, so we gotta check the more and abide what you step. We'll flex and get a hole in your side, swallow your pride, don't let you lip react. You don't wanna see my hand where we hit me at. The essence of the whole thing, I think, for me, and I think for you, and everybody, that's it's cool characters. So it's cool characters yeah. and good roleplay. Yeah, it's and escapism, man. Yeah, of course, it's, isn't it? Totally. It, so. If you've got a good DM anyway, they'll, they'll know what you've got to roll. So yeah. the fact of the matter is, is that it, I, it's never like. A case where because you don't know the rules 100%, you've not been able to play. You've just gone Harrison will die off this. It's yeah. as simple as that. But you know my brains. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I not... borrow Harrison's brains for but... but Harrison helped me out though because when yeah. I was um, GMing for the first time, I had obviously read the rules. But you've got a lot going on. Not only thinking, oh shit, I've got to go to the book. Yeah, and there was sure. a few times when we were pausing because I wanted to check, look it up. And I was like, right, his birthday's coming up. He wants Savage Worlds anyway. I'll buy it for him for his birthday. <laughs> but kind of actually, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll buy it for him. It's come yeah, to a price. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, but, but, it, yeah. but it was perfect though, because yeah. if I was a little bit stuck, rather than, you know, and panicking and stuff, 
uh, Harrison had read the book and he could help me out. And yeah, you were cracking. And it was wicked. You're very good. But you've got a lot of experience in DMing, bro. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, so, good. so. it's good. And but anyway, think, carry on. Yes. Yeah, so. Yeah, so after you've created the character, you've come up with a concept. You've come up with a cool backstory. Yeah. You've done all your stats to fit that. Those are like the three most important things. But then, the thing is, like we said before, you've got to flesh out a character as the game right. goes on. And yeah. How how do you go about doing that then? How do you make sure your character is well realised within the game as, yeah. he, as he plays? Well, I, I, I've had you know all sorts of different characters and some that are more sort of aggressively upfront with everyone and sort of take over the group a little bit and some that are not. And do you I, think I just you're going to be a bit rascal in this campaign from the offset or do you just think let's see how he's, how he's treated? Oh, and totally. See, like that? Yeah, exactly. He's a product of his environment, basically. Right, okay. So when I'm in sort of like the, our team and I see the characters we've got around me, what does he have a connection with one of the characters? It, it, like Sean's character used to always help out my character, Rockford Magnum. Yeah, Jim used yeah. to always save him, you know, and that kind of happened quite a lot. So obviously Rockford would start liking Jim. So you build a relationship but you're always, your character and then he becomes always a bit... talk to someone straight away. At the beginning of the game it's always like I turn to thing and say and you'll just start a conversation with the first person next to you and that's one of your things you always do in every yeah. game and it's yeah. almost like you think about what, I suppose if you had a group of tra- strangers in a room exactly. you would probably say hi to each other I yeah. love the way how you how seriously you take it when you're playing if oh, that makes yeah. sense yeah, no, it's absolutely. such a great thing yeah, <laughs> yeah. no it's brilliant uh, yeah I mean you know there was obviously the, the little diva moment where I got upset about my character dying but totally. I think yeah it's understandable to though bro <laughs> yeah, it's you understandable it made, this, it made this memorable <laughs> moment and it wasn't it's not It's not as if like a character getting angry is, is a big event but it made it so memorable because it was just so well played. It's like you said, what you do is you have your character react to to situations how you think they would react given their past and all of that. Yeah. And like that really works, I think. But the thing about when I make characters, I feel like I approach it differently to you. I think you tend to have like really the best foolproof way of making a good character. Because... Um, you do. You think about you think about your character on so many levels rather than just uh, some statistics on the sheet and it's brilliant yeah I like to include like especially Ernest the latest character like he's not a pedophile he, he, is he right? no he's just he's just why did you say pedophile <laughs> you, I, it just, it's because he's softly spoken Michael Jackson and, and he's, he's a, a scout, boy, scout leader yeah but he's really an over mummified man like his mum's been his rock and his whole universe well, well I'm not being thing. funny so the reason you he's killed... very recluse and very yeah. sort of religious and the reason you and... killed Sarah the bottom line was that you insulted his mum. Yeah, that's the only reason. She insulted yeah. uh, Ernest's mum, and that was it. And then that's when the whole fucking Ernest, death yeah. death fight happened between my own characters, and it was nuts. It was crazy. But, it was but I mean, that was building up for a couple of weeks, and yeah, uh, I think that's that was one of your best characters. That you, I know you. Yeah, I've got to say, yeah, Sarah, play, yeah, Sarah, Sarah was Sarah so was good. very good, and and the, and I your, never your felt character that. is quite short lived. H. But the thing about when I make characters, I feel like I approach it differently to you. I think you tend to have like really the best foolproof way of making a good character because but the way i do it is i tend to base them on people i know and because <laughs> i don't work with anyone anymore and I, and I work at home it means that i don't um meet anyone so i tend to base them on people that i listen to just us or us you're right okay yeah. and um so that one was based on um that one that character is based on guy woodward from two good boys which is a fucking great podcast hilarious you recommended that to me yeah and... go and listen to that but nonetheless so I, I tend to do it that way because I don't know, like, I don't think I'm as good as coming up with a completely original idea like you are, but I, I sort of try and put my own spin on an existing But I think you, you, made, you made such a reaction in the, in the team that never, we've never experienced before, yeah. and that was so good. The and biggest was, threat was inside the, own, the yeah, actual and, party. And, and in yeah. the survival game, that kind of fit. It really well, worked, worked, didn't it? Story. Yeah. Yeah. That just goes into feeding into, like, what makes a, like a good character good when you yeah. flesh them out, is that when you've got to play your character's flaws as well as their um, you know, good points because, it, and it doesn't matter, even if you're affecting the party badly, you, I think you've got to do it because yeah. it means that it creates a believable character and it makes for some great moments as well. And in that situation, I fucked the party over so massively but it was that's what my character would have done. Yeah. So well, I had and, to do it. And, and even you said that at times. You're like, sorry guys, I've got to play it. You and know, you, you put, knew you knew it was a bad thing. Yeah, you boys but definitely I hated her, but I, I really liked her at the same time. It yeah. was, oh, that's, totally, that yeah. was what was great about it. Like one tip I wanted to share that I thought was pretty cool and I actually this isn't a DMing tip, it was learned off um like a, a writer, I think it was Patrick Rothfuss actually, but he said that um 
people love to tell stories, right? Yeah. And that's that's a really, really good way of fleshing out a character. And that's one thing that Savage Worlds actually almost forces you to do. Mm -hmm. But you do it in any game that you're playing. Char people in real life love to tell stories. You tell people about shit that happens to you because it's a funny story. You tell people about stuff all the time. So with Sarah, for instance, one of the ways I tried to flesh her out was just to try and tell stories from her childhood because yeah. everyone does that in real life yeah like you two tell me stories about reading a porn mag in an alley with a stick and things like that. <laughs> and, and i'll be like hey, wait, me and right me and right me and right grew up how long we know each other mate oh, since we was four four yeah and we lived opposite each other so yeah. back in the uh, back in the good old days when That's mobile right, phones didn't exist we used to sit and look at each other through the window and talk on the <laughs> yeah, phone yeah. it's a little bit creepy actually it's isn't it? weird yeah, looking yeah. back two kids looking across the street each other on the phone and we did find one of our first ever porn mags it was down at uh, your alley it was yeah did, on the way home from so you were on the phone looking yeah. at each other and, and you just said, Nick, I found a poor mag in an alley. Let's go look it. Jump on <laughs> our bike and go down the road. Yeah, yeah, down the road. And then you went in there and then you were like, Nick, why are you standing so close to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why was weird. that? What is that? Why is it raining? Hang <laughs> <laughs> on, it's clear sky. Stuck it in there. Warm rain. <laughs> Thick rain everywhere. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> Is a bell end. Harrison is number a bell end. Anyway, the fucking the point I was trying to make was um, that uh, I had my character sort of tell tell stories about stupid shit that she yes. had in her childhood. So I um, I actually nicked this like pretty much wholesale from two good boys. But I told a story about how she used to have wrestling matches with her mates in uh, her mate's house, and they called it the Fight House. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and she was like, and I won the fight. Who's yes. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, it's classic. But I think that, you know, that's another thing that you've done that I do, is that you make a character that instantly stands out, mm -hmm. and it, it, it almost makes yeah, it... Yeah, it ruffles people's feathers, and it, and, yeah. it, and, it, and, it, and it gets it gets the characters kind of mixing together, and it, and it starts the it game. It creates conversations. And I definitely yeah, think that, like, reactions and for my first time as a GM as well, definitely, like, you guys, the role-playing from your side of the table really helps me... Uh, kind of develop my story and throw it back at you and we work together yeah. and it really really works you and bounce off of that so yes totally funny. you've got to have you've got to have a, a really nice even balance and an even flow I think between the GM and the players and it just kind of really makes really good things happen if, you, if yeah. you're both if you're both working together to kind of towards this kind of wicked story because as a yeah, player absolutely. as a player let's be honest you've got an easier time yeah the totally oh, and I think, yeah. I think you could uh, just like like you do right like um we like i tried to do what you could do is just try to to just put that little go a little extra mile with your character and try and make it memorable and and then the deal Not just one that might win memorable. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, yeah. um and that's basically it. So, to summarise, basically, the ultimate character creation guide is thus. Come up with a good idea for a character, make a backstory that explains how he got to that place, do your character sheet, and then always try and stay true to your character, no matter what, for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yep. Absolutely, yep. That's and the then, way I do it. And then that's, <laughs> that's how, how does it. That's how Risey does it. Have a bit of an imagination. Don't be afraid to be super creative. And even if you think it's going to be off the wall and just be weird, just go with it because you can always fine tune that and make it quite cool. In a land far beyond your imagining, adventure waits. And down beneath you will find things that you never dreamed of seeing. Goblins, orcs, treasures, mountains of gold. Will you be brave enough to delve deep and beat the final boss of the dungeon? This is Adventure Calls, available for forty nine ninety nine ninety nine. Available at all good retailers. Oh, okay, yes. so this Adventure Call is a special Adventure Call because we're going to call it Adventure Call of Cthulhu. Um, Ryan is now going to call McDonald's, um, pretending to be a paranormal investigator from the 1920s. McDonald's. Hey there. Hello. Hey, I heard uh, you caught about a ghost situation that you have. I heard just you, you got a ghost situation. My name's Rockford Magnum. I'm a paranormal investigator. Now I'm gonna come down there and help you out. Yeah, cool. But you're a bit late. We called you hours ago, mate. I hope I'm not gonna get charged for this. Well, it's 200 bucks, buddy. I heard you're serving up ghost burgers. 200 bucks. We're not in America, mate. God damn, where are we? I've been done. <laughs> cool. Alright, what do you mean, buddy? I, I need, yeah, no, I, look, I, I'm coming down to help you out with your ghost situation. Now, hey, you're, it's scaring the fucking customers, buddy. Now, you can't keep it. 200 bucks. Yeah, I Me and my I'll team have, will take care of it. I guess I'll have to submit. We need to get it out of here. That's right, that's the, my man. What's your name, buddy? 
My name's John. You running John. the you running the check, John? Yes. Okay. Well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna need the check first before we do the work. Okay. And look, John, can you help me out here? What what's the ghost look like? The ghost. Yeah. Describe it. Well, it's dead. It's a dead ghost. That yeah. that that's really helpful, John. John, what does it look like? It's a male, dead ghost. Work with me, buddy. It's a male, it's a dead goddamn ghost. That's the business we're dealing with. We know they're dead. We're trying to make them stay dead. You're more deader than dead. You know what I'm saying, John? More dead than your love life, buddy. Put the cookie down! Put the cookie down. It's the goddamn ghost. They love fucking cookies. <laughs> John, don't feed the fuckers cookies. Don't do it, buddy. They do like to eat. That's why they're at McDonald's. Oh my God. He's a company man, is John. Okay, I'll be down in 10 minutes anyway, John. Uh, I'll see you soon. Have the, money ready. Have the money ready. I'm coming to see you, John. Hold tight. I think he was um, getting older. <laughs> yeah, he was getting older at the end. Now. <laughs> <laughs> he might have been the guy in the drive-thru. That was the, so bad. That was wicked. No, that, was, that awesome. was really funny. That was awesome. And he's I like, like, there's a ghost in it. Sorry, what was that? Cheeseburger? Yeah, I'll go. Welcome to the Chamber of Challenges. Chamber of Challenges. The Chamber of Challenges. Chamber of Challenges. The Chamber of Challenges. <laughs> this is the Chamber of Challenges. and I love that jingle. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we set challenges for each other. And I think we'll start off with the one. I set Ryan a challenge during the week, didn't I? Yes. Oh my god. And the Lord. challenge it was, was to watch the Tom Hanks movie Mazes and Monsters. And then give us a review. Is this the one you spoke about on one of the other pods? When you... It is, yes. Oh my but I'm god. Not spoil yeah. it. So, Ryan, Mazes and Monsters starring Tom Hanks. What's it all about? Go. <laughs> okay, first of all, I could put it straight on there. It's an hour and 50 minutes. I watched 30 minutes. I couldn't go oh. on any longer. That's how bad this you found is. found a challenge then. It's basically a bunch of rich university kids that are academics and. They're just kind of got repressive parents or their parents don't quite care because they've got their own dramas in their life. So they escape through <laughs> mazes and monsters. And these... Sounds stupid. Well, it starts off setting the scene. Well, it is bloody stupid, to be quite honest. It starts off the scene where it's piece. been a murder and they say it's related to kids playing mazes and monsters. <laughs> now, you know, straight away, it's, it's piqued my interest. Um, but the, the to a young, a very fresh Tom Hanks is in it, and he's actually all right in it, and he's actually dying amongst all the trash that's really? around him. Yeah, it's, 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 it's painful. There's some cracking. You can watch it for comedy purposes, but that soon gets boring after like ten minutes. Like it is comedy <laughs> gold, but ten minutes worth. That's oh. it. That's all I can muster. So as far as I remember, like this was one of those game. Uh, this was one of those films that came out when. The media was trying to demonise D and D, and right. and it was like one of those films that's trying to influence people not to play it because it had satanic connotations. Well, this is the way they play it is in candlelight, and they're all super dramatic, <laughs> and, and they're all like it's it's like a Ouija board, but it's not. They pull a, like yeah. a kind of sacrificial sword out and just and put the, it on the side. And Tom Hanks is putting yeah. the misty eyes on some chick across the table, and he has a romantic interest. And after oh. that, I was like, man, that's that's enough for me. But it was truly. We're talking big era, or is it after big? It was before Big Oh, really? I think it's one of his first He's like films. a little baby, isn't Yeah, it? he's super young. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 82 this one was made. I think so. Yeah. But wow. he... um Re baby. What, he's, he's, he's so bad. And even the beginning of it, it's just filming buildings as the credits roll up. It's it's just Shit. horribly low budget. So you found the challenge then? Yeah, because you didn't watch the whole <laughs> didn't thing. Didn't watch the whole film. But as far yeah. as I remember, what happens is that he plays a cleric, <laughs> he, he plays a cleric in this game, and he gets so into the character Correct, actually, that, bit, that yeah. he kills somebody because he's still his character when he's out of the game, and no. he thinks that she's like a dire rat or something, <gasps> and he kills her. Right, yeah. He's... That happens later in the movie, I think. Yeah, but I just you take away half an hour of my life that I'll never get back. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, 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 it is just a horrible movie. But if you want to watch, if you've got some, you know, you don't mind wasting your life, then <laughs> yeah. it's definitely worth a watch. What do you guys think happened? One of the players Robbie played with got carried away and killed him. Well, that's kind of far out. Mazes and Monsters is a far-out game. 
swords, poison, spells, battles, maiming, killing. Hey, it's all imagination. Is it? I'll be talking to you. Uh, Funny enough, um, Ryan met up with one of our friends, Lou, earlier. And Lou said to him, um, Ryan, Nick's got a challenge for you guys later, and he's gonna, you're going to get fucked up. So I wonder <laughs> yeah. what this is. And there's no boot here, so I don't know how fucked up we get on this. I told him to say that to you. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. we, we thought ah, so. I knew that the definitely. mind games began. So this is called uh, Straplines in Space. Uh, Straplines in Space. Yeah. Strap-ons. Uh, kind of. Strap-ons in space. I did, I, I did one of what, right. 60 so when Lou said fucked up, <laughs> yeah, you, he you, went up the anus. You're getting fucked, boys. No. Oh, God. <laughs> God. I'm choking. Uh, no, I was going to say that, but it works. So uh, I've gone for strap lines in space, and it's basically um, I'm going to give you uh, the strap line from a sci-fi movie, and you've got to tell me what movie it's from. Okay. okay. Yeah. Fun. I'll All watch. right. So you can both confer because I know you're shit at films because you don't watch them. So, so you might struggle. Points? But Ryan's very good at films. Is it a team effort? This, or is it? Uh, yeah. Team so team? it's me v you then. So okay. can you guys beat the uh, quiz master? All right. Let's okay. do it. Okay. Cool. Um, you, the quiz master's got the. Answers, right? Yeah, I've got the answers. Okay. So, so just, you just got to be. Me. Me. Oh, I'm a gatekeeper then. If you if you beat me, then you get you. You're a gatekeeper. Oh, right. <laughs> we could never beat you. You <laughs> have the answers, Nick. Oh yeah. Well, that's kind of far out. Mazes and monsters is a far out gate. Basically, I've got um, a load of strap lines from movies, from sci-fi movies, and you guys have got to tell me what movies they're from. So I'll give you. And it's sci-fi movies. Sci-fi, sci yeah. Okay. Um, so um, yeah, so I suppose first person to answer gets a point. Yeah, right. Sounds Fair good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, so the first one is man is the warmest place to hide. The thing. Yes. One point. For oh, that's one of my favourite films. That is a great movie. <clears throat> right. Okay, I get one point. One point, Harrison. Um, you're <laughs> one point. Yep. Oh no, boy. Isn't it tradition to let the guest win? No? Fuck off. What? Okay. Shut up. <laughs> we let the guest die. It's <laughs> Yeah, that's out of tradition. Right, um, so, uh, question number two. Uh, man has made his match, now it's, now it's his problem. Oh, man. Prometheus. Young Frankenstein. No, you're both wrong. It's Blade Runner. Oh, oh, you should know that. You love Blade Runner. Yeah, I don't know the taglines. You know? Oh, yeah, no. I mean, sometimes you do, man. I think I I'm download films friends. and I don't have right. them on. You know, you are not others. welcome here. Nick's mum's house. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's mum's bedroom. No, sorry, fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. Uh, <laughs> you are not. You are not welcome here. Okay. Uh, Sci-fi. This is just Nick saying something to us yeah. now, isn't it? Um, okay, you're not welcome here. Sci-fi movie. Uh, Red Star. Independence Day. Oh no, okay. close, but no, you're both wrong. It's uh, District Nine. I oh, fucking love that film. I know you do. It's man. one of my favourites. That's why I picked this it. This game's hard. Fuck. Next one. I thought I'd get ones that you guys would like. You like Blade Runner? Jesus. I know, mate. You don't you... Okay, you ready? Everybody yeah. runs. Oh fuck! I know this. Everybody runs. Everybody runs. Um. Can oh, I give, should I give you a clue? No, yeah, I need yeah, a clue. Go on, give us it's a clue. got a short actor in it. Ah, Austin Powers <laughs> 3 gold member. No. Right? You, you've had your, you've had your <laughs> gun. Okay, it's got a short action hero guy in it. A short action hero. Everybody runs. That's got to be Jackie runs. Chan. <sighs> no, it's, it's like time. Is it time? Sci-fi man. It's a time... No, it's, an it's, it's Hunger Games, isn't it? No, right now you're wrong. Everybody, Running Man. It's Minority Report. Oh. That's a shit film. Alright. Right. Yeah, I haven't seen well, it. I'm, it's just dog shit. I haven't seen it's it. A bad loser over there, I think. Yeah, I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed. I'm not, shit film, <laughs> shit quiz. I'm not. Alright, oh, that's alright. I'll fucking sling it out. <laughs> I'm not, I haven't seen it. I'm, not, big, more I'm not a big Tom Cruise fan. Yeah, you, yeah, you have. Uh, so it's. What is it at the moment? Two. It's one to me. No, you got two. You got two, didn't you? No. Just got one. Oh, yeah, you're right. So it's just one nil. Okay, <laughs> shit. I thought you'd do better than this, boys. Uh, right, okay. He's the only kid ever to get into trouble before he was born. Terminator 2. <laughs> <laughs> John Connor, you've been a naughty boy. So, what is it? He's the youngest person the ever no. <laughs> to be in a sci fi movie. No. Nope. <laughs> He's the only kid ever to get into trouble before he was born. Um, E.T. <laughs> E.T.'s no. a little kid. No. Um, go on then. Okay, hang on. You've already answered. I'm going to have another go. You said Terminator oh, 2. You don't get this. My wife got this. Come on. Say again. 
Oh, one he more time. He doesn't get another fucking go. I get another fucking okay, go. Okay, it's a team effort. All right, fuck we it. We discuss it. I'll give you. I'll give you. An, uh, I'll give you another clue. It's one of my favourite sci-fi movies. <laughs> I'll give you another clue. It's got. A, it's got a very unique car in it. Back to the Future. Yeah. Well, yes. Oh, he's got it. How does he get another yes. go? I get. You got another go. How do you get another go? I got another fucking go. Do you want to go outside? We just can talk about this, gentlemen. I said you both get. I said you could both say. And I'll give you a clue. Right, last one. Right, you ready? There's a star man waiting in the sky. David Bowie. Shit. <laughs> this is Stop. It's just David Bowie star man. The song. <laughs> what? You might You did tell us it was music. It wasn't. Ryan, I just we... got to drop a Bowie in there. Should we hurt have... <laughs> him and his buddy. You got it right though, shit. I thought you'd just think it's an old 1950s film. <laughs> <laughs> so I just So you win then. I got three points, Ryan got none. Take that film expert. Well they... yeah, wow, you got you got yeah. fucked up, mate. I know. That's that's the way the way it went. That's the chamber of that's the chamber of rigged. Cha that's, oh, rigged. that's the chamber of challenges. <laughs> <laughs>I, I know if you tell me film quotes. I was like, no, I get that. All right, I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you a film quote from no. a sci fi movie right now. Okay? All right. What What is going on with all these prawns? Oh, it's really annoying. Yeah. That's because oh, you just said it's your favourite film. District 9. Go on, do a different one other than District 9. All right then. Uh, I'm a robot. I've got a personality. Let's <laughs> just all do Neil Plumkamp movies. That's, that's, that's yeah. fucking um, Chappie. Chappie, yeah. All right, third that's one. That's the only two films that you like. All right, third one. All right. I'm Matt Damon and I'm in a South African movie. Elysium. <laughs> Again, Neil Blumkamp. You nailed it. You got it. <laughs> Blumkamp crush going on over there. <laughs> and that's my quiz. Hey everybody, come gather around the fireside. I got a story to tell you about a time when I beat two goblins and three basilisks all by myself. That's right, I did it with my own two hands. And my trusty six shooter, of course. But that's not the point. Point is, I beat him. I won. Fireside Tales. So this segment of the podcast is where we tell stories from our RPG experience stories. In experience of stories. Um, so, so why don't you go last because he's the fattest. Okay, yeah, yeah there you go. I'll go first. Uh, so my story is about the GURPS game that we played and it's your character, right? Uh, Randa Dixon. Okay, so you guys so you guys were all in the casino and I think you were trying to find some information or something like that. And um, uh, there was some gambling going on and I think Harrison had made up a um, like a really simple gambling system and he was like, so uh, you asked him, can I gamble then? He was like, yeah, sure. So you sit at the table and then fucking we was there for absolutely ages and it was like, I can't remember, I can't quite remember what it was, but it was just dice rolling, wasn't it? Yeah, and um, Randy Dixon, Ryan's character, had just come across the most money he's ever had in the game as so well. The pot yeah. was huge, wasn't it? And he had a, a greedy trait. Yeah, that's so that's you playing your character yeah. again. So you, what did you do then? So you went up against this guy, like this big American guy that was like obviously a big high roller. Yeah. And it like ended up in a face-off between you two. I think you lost your cash, didn't you? Well, yeah, the, the stakes got higher and higher. Yeah. So Randy went back down to That's right. Big pot, so um, then you left the table with nothing. Yeah, absolutely nothing. <laughs> and then you, so, and you couldn't get over it. And you was like, you was like, I, I, I'm not having this. Yeah. And you was like, I'm just gonna fucking go over to him. And uh, we was like, really? And he was like, yeah, no, definitely. And you fucking storm over to this guy, and you start talking to him. I can't remember what it was you did to persuade, but we we had these things. Well, I tried to pickpocket him. Oh, that was right. Yeah, like, sorry. Yeah, you want to get your money back? Yeah. back. <laughs> Greedy. He would try. I'm just gonna pickpocket all that cash back. So. You tried to pickpocket, failed. He spun around and you caught you. Um, and then we, you had a weapon on you that we. Well, had to, yeah, I tried to neutralise the situation by right. giving him a present. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So you, we had this weapon called a shot bun, and for all intents and purposes, it was a bun. But little, the, the secret weapon of it was that it had a fucking gun inside. Yeah. So um, you squeezed down, and uh, the side that had the filling in, where like almost so you know like a donut's got a hole in it. Yeah. That was the um, that was the, the the gun where the where the bullets came out. So the idea is. You bite down on it and shoots out and shoots out. It'd be like one shot. Yeah. So he was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna get him to kill him." When they bite down, they, they brains blow out. That's it, side. exactly. So, so you tried to sneakily, uh, as Randy, and feed this gentleman. Yeah, that's it. You tried to talk to him in the bun, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, and, he like, hey. and he was gonna, and he was like, he was like, he was like, oh, it's a nice bun. He was a big fat guy, and he was like, actually, yeah, that looks pretty tasty. And he was about, and he was just like, why don't you just eat this here, this here shot bun? And he went. Just as he was going to munch it, he was like, shot bun! <laughs> and he knew exactly what it was, because it was a the weapon. mistake I actually made in the game. I said, why didn't you eat the shot bun? And I handed... Rather than bun. I, yeah, I, I 
didn't even conceal the fact that I was giving him a shotgun. So you just handed so, him a loaded gun and asked him to bite into basically, it and die. Basically, yeah, because I completely forgot. Um, and anyway, yeah. Done. So, and then it, uh, oh, no, world broke, broke loose in the casino. But the fact that you wanted to just get him to commit suicide in a busy casino was just Just nuts. to get your anyway, money back. Just to get your cash back. <laughs> that's yeah, really you, handy, man. He turned the thing around and slammed it with his hand to shoot you. With oh, the that's right, yeah, there, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. Did you take, I can't remember, anyway, I think you did, then, then it all kicked off, didn't it? it we, kicked you off. flew away, actually. I, he, had wings, <laughs> he left that so, carnage yeah. and then, um, yeah, got his bionic wings out and just flew out of the casino. I was like, sorry, guys. I wasn't sticking around. No, you weren't sticking around. The one I was going to tell is sort of a story about how, as a DM, you can prepare a lot of stuff, and you know that that the players can fuck that and um, basically make it not happen. So I created this character within the GURPS sci-fi universe that was his name was Rabula Conundrum, and he was this. Um, well-known adventurer throughout the galaxy, right? And throughout the game, I was making loads and loads of references to him. So characters that they met would often mention him as this great adventurer that once was. You would see posters um, for movies about his life. Some people were reading books about him. There was, there was just, a TV series going on in the background. Yeah, hints were dropped everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was yeah, called yeah. Rabula Conundrum Space Adventurer. Big deal. And, um, yeah, then what happened was is that the guy, despite <laughs> despite all these deals, he had um, become penniless and he did, like gambled all his money away. And you guys found him in in what I creatively named Space Vegas. Oh, well, that's and, right. And yeah. um, you found him. Just he approached us, didn't he? When yeah. we were sh- like get get ready to take off. Exactly, it? and he was begging for change, and he wanted to sort of get on your ship and be part of your crew. And one of the characters um, took a dislike to him straight away, Hiroshi, yeah. and just started bullying the fuck out of him. And was like, <laughs> he, was, yeah. he was hitting him, he was pushing him, all of this. I don't and like you. this guy was supposed to be like a main character <laughs> in the whole fucking game, and he's supposed to be this epic hero that was going to come God, and yeah. adventure and he was with him. He's been treated like a bitch. He's been treated like a bitch. Yeah, because yeah, we was all like, hold on a minute, this guy's wicked, isn't he? And it was just. Yeah. And Sorry. then um, basically, what, and then what happened was you guys were taken off. And the guy was getting on your ship, but the hatch hadn't yet closed. That's right, yeah. And then Hiroshi pushed him off, and he fell down to the ground to a grim death. And that was it. He lasted about 30 seconds of you guys meeting him before he got killed. <laughs> and he was nice tragic. as well. That was the thing. He was like, hey, guys. And he wasn't like he wasn't um, confrontational or anything. No. But I think it was um, it, it Hiroshi's trait. James, trait, James yeah. Brain, the character. Wasn't yeah, he, he, he was trait. a bully and he stuff. He was a bully, yeah. yeah. So he saw a weakness in this character. And yeah, he, splat- he played the character, he's, but he's it just goes to show you need to plan out everything in a campaign. and you know, Somebody will fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Push it off a spaceship. <laughs> Right, well, my story is actually when we were playing um, GURPS, which was the one that you... Same campaign as both of ours. Yeah. Oh. So we're going for well, you know. three classical stories. GURPS right in it yeah. tonight. GURPS in it up. So, yeah, no, we we spent a lot of time accumulating wealth as a team and um, done various missions and, you know, just in the aid to get money to be able to upgrade our ship because we thought that would be the coolest thing, especially as a team, like, yeah. discussing it. I mean, we, took of, like, like, we had fag breaks that went on for nearly an hour just talking about upgrading the ship. Like, yeah. You know, we, we had a pet gorilla with us, Dr. Johnson, that you've heard about before probably on the yeah. old other Mentioned episodes. briefly, yeah. yeah. Um, we even went as far as inventing, a, like having a cinema in, inside the ship with a, a jungle bit so he can play and have his own and area. A tire and, swing. and a tire swing so he <laughs> yeah. can watch movies with us. It was planned out to a T, a bar here, we want jail cells, and we're just going to have it all ornate like an old sort of like. Um, it was like an old ship, wasn't it? Like yeah, a it was like a pirate ship. ship. Yeah, yeah, inside, yeah. And it had a proper so old uh, wheel and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was also, we went to so much and detail. And the captain's deck. And we, and we, we priced it up and everything, hours, didn't we? And how anyway. long it would take and stuff, yeah. We worked towards this and worked yeah. towards this. And um, inevitably, we ended up getting it. And, um, <laughs> sorry, I nearly tipped over the microphone there. Um, and we ended up getting it. And on its maiden voyage, we called it Excelsior. <laughs> it was great. Very um, nice. It's a beautiful ship. Um, and anyway, made a voyage. We come across this character um, in space called Dervish Dervish, <laughs> um, which actually develops into quite a, an interesting character throughout the campaign. 
Um, we picked him up because he, he was in need of assistance. What did he need? What was his problem again? Um, he was broken down in the middle of space. That's right. He was a little mo- a boa bike. He was like a ball of je- like a cube, cube of jelly. jelly, really, yeah. He? And he was just floating. So we 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 ummed and ahed about it. We planned about it, and we said, "This is how we're going to bring him in. We want to take him straight to the jail cell, and we'll question him there. He doesn't seem to have anything on him." So we took him in. And anyway, he, he reveals, as we take him into the jail cell, that he's rigged our whole ship with bombs. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not what you want on the maiden voyage. And oh, yeah. hours we put into plan. Yeah, and he said that it, the bombs would go off if um, he died. Because Correct. he had a heart rate monitor. And you made a mad grab for the monitor. Randy did. Randy f- took a chance and made a grab for the monitor. Are oh, you trying to get... Was it inside him? Yeah, it was inside the jeller. Jeller. Yeah. Jeller. The jeller. Inside the jeller. It's inside the jeller. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we went and grabbed it, and uh, he blew up the ship. Immediately. Immediately. Oh, cut it in half, in killed half. two of his crew. Yeah. We had just picked up, like, the most sickest um, sushi chef as well. Yeah, he was remember. the best chef in the whole galaxy. We he... paid him on our ship. That's how much money we had. Yeah, you know. and you, you, had, you had staff, you had employees, and it all got fucked. It was, oh, it was a beautiful it was shit for one. Do you my know this saddest saddest so did. My beautiful gorilla blew up. I think it was the saddest bit in a campaign ever because it wasn't like that was a thing. The, the whole angry. campaign was building up to you getting your own mothership yeah. fucking thing. Yeah. And you'd spent so long. I mean, it was months, wasn't yeah. it? Months oh, of work. It was and so much planning. And we all got not so in game time, I'm talking about real life time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally yeah. months of planning. Yeah. And then when you were dec- when you went to the guy who could upgrade it and he had all of like he, he was pricing it up and telling you what he could do. Was that was name? maybe like an hour Whatever. his name is Luke Juke. That was it Luke Juke, yeah. Um you spent maybe an hour just Tighten up what you wanted and getting him to, like bargaining yes. with him. Yeah, when you going out and getting out, stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then it got a beautiful fucked. drawing of it. Yeah, it, it was amazing. amazing. It literally really left the, the it literally left the planet's orbit and then got blown into bits. Yeah, mate, <sighs> that was such a shame. Uh, a great story. Makes me but sad fucking now. awesome. <laughs> it was a great story. Yeah, it does, mate. A valuable lesson was learned. If you pick up anything nice, don't pick up jelly. Yeah, don't touch jelly. In the future you will be able to send a letter from anywhere on the planet. This is the future. This is the Electro Letter. Okay, so the final segment of the show is Electro Letters. This is where we take your electronic letters from the intercomputer and we answer your questions. Spit them out and answer them. Yeah. Um, so the first one has come in, and it's from uh, Adventures of the Mind. Wait, is that his real name? Adventures of the Mind. Wait, is that his real name? Adventures of the Mind. Oh, we got stuck in a time loop. Well, <laughs> um, you know, so what's his question? Powerful stuff. His question is: What is the best way to handle a critical failure with players uh, that still makes the character seem cool and competent? Well, mm-hmm. we were talking about this before, and imagine if you were playing a James Bond type character. Because mm. the appeal of that character is that he's always cool, isn't it? Yeah. The same goes yeah. for maybe yeah. Batman as well. Yeah. And yeah. and like. It would be really hard if you did a fumble and you just fell over flat on your ass. Just look like an idiot. Really. And I think yeah. I think like the best way is to try and sort of role play around it. So if you fall over, you've got to be like um, you've got to try and roll again to do an athletics to get up and like sort of make sure that you're doing like a sick like that martial like arts jump. Into a when dark, yeah, yeah, yeah. Their back yeah. straight. Yeah, back just up be like, again. I was yeah. just investigating something down on the ground. Yeah, yeah I'm getting back up. Yeah. Yeah. Get back and you get up in like there. such a cool way that it it like rekindles that coolness. And everyone goes, <gasps> oh no, it's all right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just got to roll with the punches with that. Yeah, that's what your character's like. I mean, sometimes it could be if you fall over and you're a bit of a retarded character, then um, you know, you can work. But I was thinking though, if you're but if you're say for instance like. If you are a James Bond type, you could always come back with like a quip. If you fuck yeah, up, like totally. let's say for instance you try to fire your gun and the recoil makes it fling out of your hand, you could just be like, "Looks like I popped off too soon," or, or <laughs> and, "I yeah, always yeah. climax <laughs> instantly." I don't know. That, that's <laughs> been bad. I can't that come up with a quip like that. But if you turn I always climax instantly. <laughs> yeah, like, what? No. The women are just like, "Get the fuck away!" Yeah, from yeah. move. <laughs> uh, so next question is coming from Sean Bowen uh, on G Plus, and he's nice. Big quick, Sean, nice quick, big Shawnee. A uh, nice quick one is D and D or Pathfinder. Pathfinder. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say as well. Yeah, Pathfinder for me yeah. as well. Yeah, play D and D. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Okay, cool. So, uh, and our next question is coming from. Oh, blimey! Uh, I've got to get this right now. Luis uh, Pineda. Oh God. Luis Pineda. Pineda. Luis Pineda. I hope okay. I got that right. Sorry if we didn't. Um, and uh, I must say, first of all, before I get, his, get to his questions, is um, 
Um, so he, he sent in a suggestion for uh, the new jingle. Uh, okay. the, for the Chamber of Challenges. Yeah. We didn't know what name to call we it. We had Challenge Room and it was shit. Oh, so right. he came up with better name. stuck for it and he sent in a suggestion. And, and Big Louie awesome. came out Trump. Yeah, yeah, totally, man. Oh, and, nice um, one, yeah, so I'd like to say, first of all, thank you for that awesome, awesome jingle suggestion. Um, I really like it. I don't know about you, but I'm Yeah, no, he's <laughs> cracking. Well done, Louis. So wicked. So yeah, he's got a couple questions. Um, so have you guys ever run a one shot where everyone was supposed to die? Uh, no, never. No? To be perfectly honest, no, 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 I, haven't. no I haven't played that. So Actually, to be fair, that'd be interesting did, though. No, but I did run a campaign um, in Pathfinder where everyone where everyone had to die to go to the afterlife to chase yes. this guy yeah. who um, uh, was in another realm. So yeah, I did run a game where everyone had to literally take this magic gun and kill themselves. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we did. We, real did we actually suicide, thought we? we were going to. We're die. freaking out, um, weren't we? But yeah. luckily, during the, we actually at that point we thought we were going to die, so it was sort of like planned that way yeah and it was a bit of a I don't know you feel a little bit betrayed by the DM when that happens yeah. I, think. I know what a cunt yeah, what a cunt yeah. Do that, yeah. so why did you make a game to kill us all you mean man because I like death well he also adds I ran a few as a way to set the tone for a world I created and to be a catalyst for the main characters it's not a bad idea yeah. so it's quite interesting isn't it yeah no that is I think it, it so like what like a throwaway done, character to get to get you in the mood and then you kind of move on to the character that's going to be a main part of the yeah because it could be like almost like the prologue and the prologue is that these people die yeah you know? yeah. and yeah, then something cool. happens after that so yeah, that's yeah, cool yeah, yeah it, I like it tells that. the story of that yeah that, 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 yeah that's I a like good it. idea. Cheers, Luke. Yeah. Right, so uh, oh yeah, wicked. Um, so our next question has come in from a um, friend of the show, Zach the Jenk Jenkins. We call him the Big Jenk, big and Jenker. that's what he's Jenker. known as on the streets, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I've heard the Big Jenk. Jenker. Yeah, okay. you don't mess with a Jenk. You don't mess with, with Jenk. You mess no. with a Jenk, you end up in the clink. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which is jail, so it's it a cool really makes sense. Yeah, so uh, he's a super cool guy. And uh, his question this week is, um, my tabletop experience has been limited to Call of Cthulhu, D&D and Riffs. Um, have you guys read any books related to Forgotten Realms or anything by H.P. Lovecraft? Do you use that information for custom campaigns? Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I've read pretty much everything H.P. Lovecraft's ever written. It makes me sound super pretentious, but... I read Call of Cthulhu to prepare for Call of Cthulhu, yep. obviously, and then from that I, I read all his other stuff um, because they're just great. So yeah. I, I downloaded it on, uh, it's a bit lame, but on Kindle they had a deal for the, you know, the Necronomicon, which is like the collected, yep. you know, HP Lovecraft works. They had that on there for like two quid, so I just bought that and read the lot. And I think just in general, like reading stuff like that, it always helps with your campaigns. And whenever I do a campaign, I always try to um, like watch and read stuff that, that will help me with it. So when I was making the GURPS campaign, I watched loads of, um, which was sci-fi, I watched loads of Futurama, Rick and Morty, Star Trek, and Fifth Element again for like the 15th time. <laughs> yeah, and, um, that film does get old. Great no, it's a classic. Yeah. And, yeah. and then with the Call of Cthulhu one, I read a bunch of H.P. Lovecraft because I knew it would help me come up with ideas and yeah. stuff. Um, I think you definitely have to do it because it just gives you so many ideas. It's so helpful. I mean, I'm the soul. I can match that as well with H.P. Lovecraft. I mean, I've read quite a few of them, um, and also I've got loads of audio books. And me and the wife yeah, used I just to did listen to H.P. Lovecraft at night when we're going to sleep. So nice. we've pretty much listened to yeah, pretty much everything. It's fucking <laughs> yeah, H.P. Horror, <laughs> cosmic horror. Guess can't the be, chicks going. Can't be a bit of cosmic horror. Do you want to see the trouser Cthulhu? <laughs> hey. It's the Dark Lord. Okay. Well, yeah. While we're at it, I should mention Neo Comic <laughs> Neo Comic. Comic Con. Comic Con. Is that a new... Um, Neonomicon. Oh. Is it a new event? Okay, Ryan has trouble with words. It's yes. called Neonomicon. I'll do Neonomicon. It. You you. Okay. <laughs> Neonomicon. Good. Yes. We, you should read it. It's by Alan Moore. It's a graphic novel by Alan Moore. And it's, it's set in a um, Lovecraftian sort of universe, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's an up-to-date sort of version. And it is so dark and so weird. Um, lots of sexy time. Oh, it? yeah. Yeah, um, but it's... So, it's it's borderline porn, but it's really? done in such a way that actually fits in with the story. To such be fair, a way. Yeah. yeah, it is. Honestly, it's like, it's the one time I've seen that kind of, like, that of sheer amount of dicks in a comic. Oh, my <laughs> God. Like, like, <laughs> including a fish penis. Whoa. It's like a monster. Fish pecker. You monster. can't unsee a fish dick. There's a fish pecker in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> it, it, it actually, it actually um, makes sense in that comic. It is actually quite horrifying. Yeah, yeah, it and really is terrifying. Like, you read that at night, it, and he's complete. But Alan Moore's a genius. Yeah. And that's what we're dealing with. If you're, yeah. if you're yeah. thinking of running a Cthulhu campaign and doing a modern day setting, read that fucking comic. Yeah. Because it is the... Um, basically, 
that is how to do a modern day setting. As always, Zach, wicked man. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, Jink boy. Yeah, yep. big Jink. mess with the Jink. Much respect to you. All right, and then our next, uh, our next uh, one's coming from Pete Jones uh, Malloy. Pete Malloy. Pete, Pete how Jones. You doing? How are you doing, Malloy? It's Pete Jones. Malloy. <laughs> Malloy. Okay. I don't know where Malloy came from. It's Pete Jones. Uh, anyway, so he's... Uh, okay, so his questions are, um, if you could keep only one of your RPG books, what would uh, what would you choose? For me, it's easy, man. It's Pathfinder. Ah, oh, oh, see. Great book. I was there when you bought that. Oh, yeah, you were. For the planet. And you could, you, could do, um, you could just do so much with that, and it's such a deep system that that's the one I would keep easily. Mine's easy, too. Yeah. Most beautiful book I own at the moment. Yeah, the it's one you... absolutely lovely. Cool it's thing. a smart book. It's just like, well, out of all the books I've got, it's the loveliest book I've got out of all the RPG books. So, and it's stunning. Yeah, so, so Call of really Cthulhu is another one that you could just do so much. And it's a classic game as well. So, so Ryan, how about you? I don't have any. What? Oh, yeah, you don't. <laughs> no, 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 you don't own any? No, I've given my You're share. You're just a player, though, don't you? You don't give a no, share. No, actually, to be fair, yeah. we went, we all went. Oh, yeah, that's um, true, yeah. I own sort of like a, a share. share. A share, share yeah. in the Gertz. And like, yeah, because we all, we all um, put a turner in mm -hmm. um, towards Gertz so that we could play. It's so expensive. And so, yeah, technically, you own a bit of Gertz. So, yeah. would you keep your. You'd, I would cut off like a fifth of the Gertz book and then give it out to you. But I tell you what, it's by far my favourite. Is it really? Gerbs, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Ooh. No, no, because it's the only book that I own. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh of course. You... My name is Beyonce Knowles, and when I'm not ready for a cube of jelly, I listen to Table Dog Twats. I'm just going to start this off right now, and I'm going to say, this question is taking far too long to answer, and I've cut most of it out, right, so you wouldn't have heard it, listeners, but there was some awful, awful things said about Gary Coleman. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to repeat it, but if you want to hear it, email us, and I'll send you the clip. <laughs> oh, no. Next question is, um, if you were stranded on a desert island with one person, who would it be? Obviously, right, we're all going to say our girlfriends and wives, right? Yeah. Because that's a given. So it would mm -hmm. be them and someone else. Okay, quick. Yeah, I know yeah, what yeah, mine yeah. is. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know, I've got okay, mine already. All right, you're going to be David Bowie, isn't it? No, not He's at all. No, no, move on. No, not at all. <laughs> Sorry, go on. The, 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 I like, the, this person I like even more than David Bowie. Oh, um, Chris Tucker. Nope. Who uh, come on, you should know. Is this another quiz? Yeah, of course. David really? Attenborough. I'm supposed to be a good chat. Oh, man. He's I love animals as if, well. If you don't know who David Attenborough about. is, he's a, a naturist. I think everybody knows who David he's, he's, a, a, he's a real naturist. A real. Yes, a naturist. It's naturist then or That's the people that like to be naked. Okay, no, so naturalist. He's, he's a naturalist. <laughs> and Nick likes to look at the old naturist too. Fuck off. If I was to be stuck on an island with any one person, do you know what I mean? Ryan, yeah. you go first. Well, you've got to think, I, you've got, you've got to think about what you need. Really? No, it's design. not about what you need. No, so you, chat, so you need Stephen humor. Fry? You need someone funny on that island. Stephen Fry's funny. So I would probably take... Jimmy Savile. <laughs> oh, fucking <laughs> hell. <laughs> Ryan. No. He's a funny guy. <laughs> not funny. Um, no, we should It's a little out. bit funny, though. Yeah. Fuck off. No, that's staying in. <laughs> no, who would you take? Not Jimmy Savile. <sighs> Gary Glitter? Oh, my who's, God. Who's what, he's a, a great singer. <laughs> Fuck off. I didn't think. Is this, who's a little black guy that was in the... You know, you little black. Say it a bit louder. in this sitcom. Was it American or sitcom? Was oh, it? Gary Coleman. Gary Coleman. Yeah, oh. I'm, I'm Gary Coleman. Fucking goblins. Fucking goblins. Okay, so new one. Start again. Cut that whole shit out. <laughs> no, Gary Coleman. That's a no. I thought they were good, but all right. Okay, so okay. say I would. My, my choice would be. Fucking hell. Who's been killed or something? I don't know. No, you can't take a dead person. Can't take a dead. You can't take. What a do dead. you want to take a corpse okay. for? Could we still be still living? It's got to be living. You got to be like me and you going to an island. Okay, I'll probably take Will Ferrell. Okay, what yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? He's funny, man. Okay. I've never not enjoyed a Will Ferrell movie. I love it. I, 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 I have. Yeah, but you might not watch any. My... Well, Alright, what about fucking you Day After Tomorrow? Films. Day After Tomorrow. That's a Will Ferrell movie. <laughs> <laughs> it fucking sucks. Step, That's not funny. Step it, was a, it wasn't even step funny. Step Brothers is hilarious. Yeah, Step Brothers. Step Brothers you know. is fucking hilarious. Mm. You just hate all films, except I, for yeah, I just like, like films. I just like films is, that aren't shit. And this is like a, a drama, a deep, a gritty drama. Like yeah. Day After Tomorrow, great movie. <laughs> it's one of my favourite movies. I hate that film. No, it, it is fucking shocking. But you said film. you've never not laughed at a Will Ferrell movie. Yeah. Well, Day After Tomorrow, did you laugh at that? He's not in Day After yes, Tomorrow. Yes, he fucking is. Is he really? No. Yes, he is. You're listening to... Will Ferrell cast. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is in that fucking movie. The day after. That's the one where the ice. Yes, it's the disaster city. movie. Yes, Jake so man. No, Will Ferrell's in the fucking movie. I'm gonna fucking prove it oh, right now. Really? Yes. Well, obviously he wasn't. For <laughs> is long. he just like a guy that's behind a desk? Yeah, he's probably an extra. 
Or is it no, he was a main character in it. Really? What serious? Oh, role? did he get chased by wolves in the submarine bit? I don't ask me to remember the movie. It's your favorite movie. <laughs> it's not my. I hate oh. it. I watched it on a plane once. And I fell asleep. I think it had just come out. Oh right, yeah, oh, yeah. It knocked me out of shit. I may have made a big think... mistake, guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. You're completely wrong. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Oh, that hurts. <laughs> I'm looking on IMDb, he's not in the movie. Yeah, that's a it's... fuck up, isn't it, mate? As if Will Ferrell will be in that movie. Revel with it, right? I just oh, thought he my was. God. There you go, that's brilliant. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely Will Ferrell's coming to the island with me. I need some fun time. There you go. Yeah. Now it's time for the final battle Magic Missile! That's who are you going to take then? Yeah. Come on, get out of your. Uh, g- g- Gary Coleman. <laughs> You're going to take Gary Coleman with you? Yeah, what I'm going to do is. A... <laughs> no. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, um, don't send it to the police. Don't send it to the police because we could get done for yeah. anti Gary Coleman crimes. Oh, yeah, that's, that's frowned upon. Um, you said that you really liked him. I did. That whole, yeah, anyway. Anyway, moving on. I would take uh, Alan Sugar. I like The Apprentice, I like what he does. But what, you, would you just get to the point of uh, random objects and be like, you're fired? Time. Yeah, and then I want to kick his ass. Nothing would be, like, be good enough. Go boy, go get a coconut. He'd be like, I can't get up there. He'd be like, you call yourself a man. He'd just berate you the whole and time. And then I'd chuck him in the fucking ocean. When I was your age. Right? And was... then I'd have the island to myself. <laughs> I'm an introvert, right? <laughs> and that's my, that's my dream. <laughs> that's <a dog>. Just <laughs> kick Alan Sugar's ass and be on my own. So you just want to take him to the island and kick him off it into the water? Yeah, yeah. I'd say, don't you tell me who's fired. What's Alan, point what's Alan you're fired you? into the sea, Alan. What's Alan? What's the Alan Sugar ever done to you, though? Did uh, you have an Amstrad? I can't. I can't. Gave you Amstrad? Did you have an Amstrad? He gave you Amstrad. The thing is, though, he's got a lot of money, right? And there are things about libel laws, <laughs> and I can't say. I can't say what he did to me. <laughs> oh, shut up! But it involves. Oh dear. Some bad penis. Oh dear. Okay, so he's okay, I'll cut that. Out you right. bad. That fuck, man. None of this is usable. I'm sorry. Oh, right. That is constantly um, trying to kill our podcast. Who could you take? Take Bear Grylls. I don't know. All right. Anyway, cut that. This is gonna lose. This is gonna get cut. I can't believe how long this question is. No, no. If you could be any one fictional character from a book, TV, or movie, who would you, who would you be? Uh, it's easy for me. I'd be Roland Deschain from The Dark Tower. Oh man. Uh, I would be Hermione Granger from Harry Potter. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Right. Well, why are you laughing? What? That's a and you spend the choice. whole movie in bed, is that right? Oh, come on. She's a child, Ryan. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. It's what, it's I forgot she was a child. Do you remember, though, yeah. like, there, was that, there was that period where um, you made a joke at work about me fancying Hermione Granger. Well, you did, and you didn't know the age. No, no, I, that wasn't true. That okay, right, true. this is getting cut. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting cut. Because I was supposed to turn it around on you, and you've turned it around on me. I'm not happy about this. I'm not happy about this. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's the Google search all over again. It's Will Ferrell. My name's Alan Rickman, and I'm Jen... Oh, no, wait. My name's also Alan Rickman. No, I'm I'm, no, Alan, I'm no, no, I'm the real Alan Rickman. No, wait, I'm Alan Rickman. <laughs> but I'm not. No, wait. No, what? But no, I'm Alan no, Rickman. No, shush. I'm la- a tabletop twat. But who would you be? F- f- t- f- In, t- book, TV, TV, movie. Could be anyone. Oh, you've got to be a superhero. You'd be Batman. Yeah, no, be, you'd be no, Superman. I'd be, yeah. I know it's lame, but being Superman, you would just have all I the knew you, Do you know what I mean? Can what I add that Ryan has a lot of Superman t-shirts? Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. no, I understand he's a flawed character, and I very much understand that. Yeah, we're not talking about the merits of Superman. You've got to think it about... It would be cool to be him. Exactly. Yeah. Wouldn't it just? And, uh, Wouldn't fi- it just? Uh, and, and finally, he's put, if you will say anything on the show, um, have a go at this one in your southern accent. Um, okay, right. So, oh my god, yeah. I've, so I think this, I know is, what this is this is like the name of a Welsh town. It's somebody really so, yeah. long. So is it not like the longest ta- yeah. town name? It might be. Yeah. But Ryan, you struggle with words. What? So have a go at reading. <laughs> no, right. Yeah. There's no read, spaces. Read, read, You've read not that. written that. Right. That's just the name of a town. Mate. It's two lines in a A4 that is one, notepad. That's, that's one, one town. Word. Shut up. Read it out. Read it out. Jesus. Go on, mate. Ilan fair hul gu gwinning iligog ir kua und drob williant anti siliogo guguk ok. Well, very well, Just round the corner from me. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Oh, that's a mouthful. Imagine telling everyone your address. Right, well, there you go. We gave it a go. Uh, Peter, you have to tell us how close <laughs> I was to, to the actual. Now it is. How it said. I reckon you Maybe did. I'm just like, that's why I can't speak English good. I'm just, I can only speak Welsh. You were, you were born an Englishman, yeah. but in your heart, you're a Welshman. I think that might be true. Yeah.
Uh, yeah, so that's his question. Nice one, Pete. Thank you very much. Keep coming in. Pete Maloy uh, there. Pete Maloy there. And our next one's come in from friend of the show, Jeanette Girard. Have you ever had a GM send your backstory back with additions, as in six fucking pages with goddamn colour photos? It sounds like Jeanette's angry about something, doesn't it? I don't Ooh, know, Jeanette. yeah. Jeanette? Someone's pissed off Jeanette. Don't you know? You don't piss off the giraffe. You don't. Or you get a, or, 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 or she kills you violently in the woods. Like well, six fucking pages worth, mate. Six pages That's of killing. Yeah. So have you ever uh, <laughs> have you ever been given a backstory and then sent it back with add-ons? I don't. Uh, no. It's a bit harsh, isn't it? I haven't. Um, that guy. Yeah, he sounds a little bit mean. <laughs> well, so he's he's gone. I like your character backstory. Let me give his, you a few pointers. Here's <laughs> uh, an essay on why I think where you can improve. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's, and it's some pictures in case it doesn't quite sink in. It's really yeah. patronising that. Here's a bit. You should drop that person. Kill, kill that person. Uh, no, she probably already has. <laughs> Never mind. Um, right, so that was all the correspondence for this week. The Electro Letters. Thank you very much, as always, and please do keep, uh, keep them coming them in, in, guys. Keep coming in. We keep love the in. correspondence. We love you very much. We I'm love sorry you. Sorry we had to cut all the Gary Coleman bits. As I said, email me, I'll send them to you. <laughs> Nice to meet you. My name's John Wick. I kill dogs every day because I'm sick. Up my sleeve, I've got a gun. So if you have a dog, you better run. We are part of the Nerds International group of sick, wicked individuals. Network, yeah. So we're going to big up one of our esteemed colleagues on the network and we're going to talk about Stefan Dragonspawn. The main man. He is literally a dragon, Ryan. Right, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And he makes a blog on the internet with this giant dragon hands, and right. it's called The Dragon's Toolbox. Mm -hmm. And it is a blog all about role playing stuff. Is he Welsh? No, he's a dragon, mate. He's a dragon, mate. He's a, well, no, no, they come from a different realm. Oh, right, entirely, okay. you fucking idiot! <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to mention Stefan's fucking blog, and you're talking about Welsh all the time. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, okay. Sorry, sorry, Stefan. Oh. I love whales, but anyway. It's because you, yeah, you no, sent the No, he's not a whale, he's a dragon. Yeah, he's definitely in Wales, come on. <laughs> so everyone check out the dragon's toolbox. <laughs> yeah. Well, last one, right. And cut. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make an omelette without killing a few kids. So let's say, for instance, that uh, you have listened to this podcast and you think, those guys sound like the best people I've ever heard sound like anything, and you want to get in touch. How do they do that, Ryan? Um, they would have to um, the Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your answer? Yeah, that was a bit panic. They I, would have to I have Facebook. no idea. I can barely contact you, you guys. I don't know how these people... Yeah, you listen to the show. He doesn't. He doesn't um, listen. I listen to it when I'm not listening to things. Right. <laughs> just, <laughs> you can't hear what we're saying. It's just like no. I listen to it. I do listen to it, but I just don't like, like it very much. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, just don't fucking listen to it. Thank All right. You. Okay. So you can get in touch with us on Facebook forward slash tabletop t. You can also get in touch with us on uh, Jamal, which is. Uh, Tabletop twats at gmail.com. Gmail <laughs> gmail.com. And you can also catch us on Twitter, which is uh, uh, at tabletop twats. Awesome. Or you can put a message in a bottle and wait a very long time. That's not even funny. No. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you can find us on Tumblr, which is tumblr.com forward slash tum Tumblr. Tabletop twats. Top. Okay. okay. Tabletop twats. Just search for Tumblr tabletop twats. Tumblr tabletop twats. We're going to try and make our Tumblr like a website from the 90s, like a Yahoo GeoCities one, and oh, it's going to be GIFs galore, mate. Yeah, so GIFs get, get on there. GIF nice. City. If you have any funny GIFs, send them to us. We're going to have a GIF. Oh, yeah, and also get in touch on the Google Plus communities also. We've got our own site, and uh, also you can find us on the Nerds International community. We're always on there chatting. We're always on there. Yeah. I need to figure out how to use a computer. He's <laughs> still getting there. Sometimes yeah. it pops up and says, hello. Hello. that's it, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, please do get in touch. Watch your Thunderbolt. Uh, 3,000 in a critical. Thunder Dark out critical. Thunder! Thunder! Thy art art slain. Yes. That was yet another episode of Tabletop Twats. Thank you very much for listening. Indeed. And Ryan, it's been great having you on as a guest. We really like you despite everything that you stand for. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel very liked right now. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of love in it. Yeah, there's a lot of love. Thanks, Thanks man. Thanks for having me. A lot of man love. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> Oh. No, thanks guys, yeah, it's been great, honestly. Um, <laughs> now, well, let's just, um, I don't know, mate, Chicken McBosh? Chicken McBosh. Chicken McBosh. Do you know about Chicken McBosh? I just say it at the end, Nobody though. I don't even know why. Okay. Stupid. Chicken McBosh. <laughs> no, dude, <laughs> fine, dude, nuts. Fuck it, I'll just... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get something out of there. <laughs>
Previously on Tabletop Twats. That Harrison that you do this stupid cast pod with is actually a space criminal. We're going to travel through time to a point where he was weaker and shoot him in the noggin. According to my chrono locator, we traveled 800 years into the future. Look at that club across the street. Batu Sakuso. Yes, uh, it's actually Harrison's club. And so, what weapon did you get? Oh, just some throwing acid. Uh, ow. Um, I got on the stage, I thought this would help, but I don't think I really thought the plan through. Uh, what do I do, Al? I've never met that man in my life! Al, look! I've got his attention! Um, sorry? Who the Glock do you think you are? Well, uh, that's a difficult question. Shut up! You come into my club, interrupt my night, make me get out of my glarking chair. You must have some gigantic gablog blogs, boy. Uh, thanks. And you? Hmm? Yeah, you. Join your little fizz bitch on the stage. Oh, there's really no need. I, I don't even really know who he is. You fucking liar. My goons saw you come in with him. We've been watching you from the start. Get the fuck onto that stage. Oh, boss? Not now, Chungus, you toad boy. Can't you see I'm busy? Just like we don't like being called goons, is all. Yeah, we prefer muscle or something like that. Well, go glark yourself. I'm busy, you fat oaf. Can't you see that? Why don't you try not being a stupid fat moron for once? Hey, where are you going? Come back here. Okay, blog suckers. I'm gonna deal with you myself. <laughs> do you really think the back flipping down here was necessary? Silence. What the hell do you two dick people want? Uh, we're here to kill him. Uh, kill it on the dance floor. And you climbed onto the stage to what? What was the reason for that? Look, he's educationally subnormal. I I'll just take him right away and abort this particular dancing mission for now. Not happening, my friend. This ain't that kind of club. I should just shoot you in the face right here and now. Oh well, Nick. Gotta take one for the team. Both of you. Oh. I should shoot you in the face, but you've interrupted these good people's entertainment. So we're gonna play a little game. A dance competition. Me versus... Well, what's your name? Mm, uh, Lamb Slice. Me versus Lamb Slice. Loser dies here, on this stage, tonight! Me first, DJ Dragonspawn, play the thing! Uh, Al, he's good. Really good. Jesus, how the fuck can his legs move that fast? Sweet Jesus. Uh, are we gonna die? Definitely. Holy shit, Al, what's happening? He's dancing so hard he's causing an earthquake. But the audience, they just seem to love it. What's wrong with them? I don't know, but hold on to something. Follow that cunt for brains. Stefan, the next tune, please. Do well. Good advice, Al. Did you see what he did? I can't possibly beat that. I mean, I'm a good mover, but... Shut up, bitch, or dance. Oh, uh, okay. That's awful. Do a bit better. That's it. No, 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 not like that. Use the hips more. Oh, God, we're dead. Maybe not, though, Al. Watch this. Oh, God, it's awful. What's that? It's my signature move. It's the lamp off. It's bloody awful, Nick. Well, what should I do? Hit him and run away. <laughs> what did you do that for? What's the problem? I said hit him, not throw acid in his face. Uh, ow. The audience. They're coming. They're coming to get us. What do we do, mate? Run away, of course. How? The fucking angry mob are blocking the way. Well, we'll use their heads as stepping stones. Run across the top of the mob. Go! Get off! Oh, fuck you! <laughs> yeah. See ya! Take that, bitch! <laughs> fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off! In your face! Whew. Okay, we're out. Now what? Out? Out, why are you waving your arm like that? I'm hailing a taxoid. What's, uh... It's a flying taxi. Oh. Get in. Where to? Away! Alright. Escape, is it? Yes, so so move, go, now! Uh, escapes require payment up front. 
Move or I'll throw fucking acid in your face. Whoa.